solve problem 1298 maximum candles you can get from boxes um, this is Elite Kalahar just the first time I ever approached this problem I hope this provides you an opportunity to see real-time intuition and me too and provides me with the opportunity to kind of uh, eloquently in a sophisticated, in a sophisticated fashion uh, uh, provide my reasoning through this problem so let's go son yeah sorry Okay, so you have n boxes labeled from 0 to n minus 1. You're given four arrays, status, candies, keys, and contain boxes. That's a lot of stuff. All right, status i is 1 if the ith box is open. So if it's open, status, this is the ith box, equals 1. And if it's closed, then status equals zero of i. And just because we paid so much for this damn thing. Where's Brown? No, it's not Brown. All right. We're going to make these boxes brown. How about that? All right. Candy's eye is a number of candies in the ith box, all right? Key's eye is a list of labels of the boxes you can open after opening the ith box. All right, so each box has a set of keys to open subsequent boxes. Okay, contain boxes is the list of boxes you found inside the ith box. Okay, you're given an integer array initial boxes that contains the labels of the boxes you initially have. You can take all the candies in any open box, and you can use the keys in it to open new boxes, and you can also use the boxes you find in it. Return a maximum number of candies you can get following the rules above. Okay, so I'm thinking about this as a graph problem, right? Because there's this directed kind of relationship where I have to find something, and then after I explore that thing... I can look at its neighbors, right? Its neighbors being the boxes inside of it, if that key exists. So in order to open some box, in order to open the jth box, right? What are the two conditions that have to be met? Well, first I have to have access to the box. So it either has to be inside of one of the contained boxes, and I'll represent that as an edge going into this thing. All right, so there's some bigger box. It could be that it's the initial box that I have access to, but something else gave me access to this box. Either I have initial access to it or it's the contained box within another box or, well not or, and as well to open this box, I have to have the key, right? So there's, there's really two conditions that have to be met in order for me to access this box. Right, I have to have, can I draw a key, you think? Does that look like a key? All right, I have to have this key, and there has to be some ith box, some ith box that jth, that the jth box is within. Right, so if I was thinking of this problem, so let's look at this example here. So we have four boxes, zero, which is open, one, which is closed, two, which is open, and zero, which is closed. And I'm just looking at this information, right? One means it's open, zero, closed, one, open, zero, closed. So from my initial state, right, which is me, I can always go to this box And to this box um, because they're unlocked or they're open right so the thing is this kind of means that I have the keys to this box right so I for these two boxes this condition is met right because these boxes are open so it's like I have the key because the key is what opens the box so I could just think of this as being the fact that the box is open I have the key so this condition is met right now what boxes can I access well, those are my initial boxes, right? So I can access initially 
only this box here. Okay. Now, what boxes open what thing? So zero doesn't open anything. One doesn't open anything. Two opens one. So this is the key condition. Uh, let me just label these boxes. So it's a little easier. Not that it's not already transparent. And three doesn't open anything. Now, how about contains? So zero contains one and two. One contains three. And that's it. So what I really did here is I just looked at these things all as systems of edges. Or not there. Keys, I looked at it as a system of edges. So zero, one, you know. I looked at these things as systems of edges. So there's a, a node or a box, a vertice zero, that has neighbors one and two. So there's edges from zero to one and one and zero to two. And I did the same thing here. So then how do we make a decision about traversing this graph? Well, both of these conditions have to be met, right? So the only way we can explore a neighbor is if both conditions are met, right? And the thing that we have to think about is, well, it doesn't really matter what order things happen. Like I could get the key for a box and then later get the, get the, um, get the uh, contained box. So I could get a key for a box and then later find it inside of another box. Or I could find a box and then later get a key for it. But the order of that doesn't matter. So as long as both conditions are met, we can explore a neighbor, right? So for this system, we start as us, right, with the conditions of, of what we have, and we're gonna run, we're gonna run breadth first search and accumulate points as we get them. So I guess for this problem we should just state that there's seven candies in here, there's five candies in here. There's four candies in here, 100 candies in here, right? All that information is here. And we'll run breath first search. So from where we're starting, remember these are all conditions that we were given. I have initial access to this box. This box is open. I have initial action to this box. From here, the only neighbor I can explore is this one because I don't have two edges going into here, right? I have the key for this box to open it, but I actually haven't found it yet because I need to open zero in order to get that information. Okay, so that means at this point, I've acquired seven points from here. Now my only neighbor in the queue is this one, so I can explore this box and I can explore this box. Now now that I have the key and this box is open, I mean, since I this box is open, I have a key and I found it and contained another box, now I can explore this node and that gives me seven plus four points. Now from here I can go here. Well, now I've found the key for this box and I can uh, reach it. So that means that this box can now be explored. And that's another five. And then finally I can go here, but that's gonna be the end because I'm never gonna find um, a key for this box. So then I just return the sum of this. So that's nine plus seven, 16. So I get 16 points for doing this. So the real, the real thing we have to do here is, so the first thing we do is create a graph with edges for both contained boxes and contained keys, I guess. Now, the thing is this, we can think of us as a box and we contain keys for the boxes that are open and we contain boxes for the initial boxes that we reach, Does it, if that makes sense. So that's how you can map it. So it works with this. Um, run BFS where neighboring nodes are only added to the queue. So they're only added to the queue if they've been reached twice. What I mean by that is, and then we add reward for each explore node. 
what I, what I really mean by this second point here is, right, we run, B, like for two, two is a perfect example. We run BFS, we reach it once, and then somewhere we can have information that two's been reached once. And then eventually we'll get here and two will be reached twice, and then it can be added to our system, okay? So that's pretty much it for this problem. I think it's, uh, I think that's the solution. Um, let's just go ahead and get started and see what we can do. Okay, so first we're gonna create this graph um, and it's gonna have length, length of status because status tells you the number of edges that you have. Well, all of these things tell you the number of edges we have. All right, and then we're gonna say for So for each key in keys, for node, or let's just keep it consistent with the language that we're using, and enumerate keys, right? Because when we enumerate, we'll say zero, box will be zero, keys will be this, box will be one, keys will be this. For key in keys, So the box is keys. For each key in there, we're gonna say G a key append key. And we're pretty much gonna do the same thing for boxes contained. All right, and then boxes contain, we'll do the same thing. So this is to give us in contain boxes for whatever, for B in boxes contain, G at box. Oh, sorry, I messed that up. Geo box append B. So this should give us the graph. And then now we need information about our, so we'll create an additional node, which is gonna represent the person. So for here, there's no, there's boxes zero, one, two, and three, and the person will be uh, box four, right? So there's one extra box, which is the person to give us what we can initially access. So for, box and status in enumerate uh, status if if stat equals one so if the box is open then g at negative one which is the last node which is going to be the person append box um so that gives us all the boxes we can go to and then for box in initial boxes so all the boxes we can access from the front those are like contained boxes for four um for that we say g of negative one append box so now we have this graph where everything has two, not everything, but we have a graph that contains information about the keys and the keys contained, it has information about the boxes contained, and has information about what stuff is open initially, and information about um, what boxes we can access initially. All right, so that's our entire graph. So the first, so we're gonna do breadth first search now. So the first box we can access is, uh, how am I gonna do this? It could be negative one. Yeah, kind of tricky, but that would be fine. Okay, so we have reward points. So our reward so far is zero. All right, it's the number of candies we can get. Maybe I should call it that, but it's fine. Um, what else? So now we have to deal with this idea of um, so 
So we have this idea of key. Uh, I'm trying to think about what to name it, but this idea of uh, what did I call it here? I said reached. So reached. So to represent the number of times each node has been reached, right? So each node has been reached zero times times length of g, okay? So what this basically saying here is I'm gonna every time I touch a node as a neighbor, I get an one plus one to reached. If the reached is two, then that means that I can add it to the queue. So it's like, if I get a key for something, the reach to that something becomes one. If it isn't a contained box, if that something is then a contained box, the reach of that something is two. So it just represents each time an edge goes into a node, that reach thing uh, increases. Okay, so while Q, let's say, I'm trying to think of the best way to do breath for search here. Um, so for node in Q, so for each node, for each neighbor, in the graph at the node, we're gonna say reached at that neighbor plus equal one. And then we'll update the queue. Uh, we'll update the reward first, because we're about to update the queue. So reward equals, so we should probably update reward too or candies inside, because I don't want, I don't want there to be a, a number of candies associated with this last node here. So reward equals sum of candies of node for node in Q. I could probably do that here and save a, a loop, but whatever, plus equal. All right, so we get all the reward from all the boxes that we have in the queue, meaning boxes that we can access. And then I say Q equals child or er, neighbor for node in Q for neighbor in G of node if reached at that neighbor equals two. So I'm basically saying I'm only going to add a, a, a neighbor to my queue if it's been reached twice. Because if it's been reached twice, that means that I've somehow got the key and somehow have information. And somehow I've reached a box that contains this box. And then we return reward. So let's try that. My computer is getting really hot, so I know that I'm running out of time. Two twenty four. Yikes. All right, so there's some issue here. For note and cue. All right, let's print G first. Make sure that G looks like our picture here. So do these things look similar? So zero can go to one. No. Oh, because that's this is zero. Okay, zero can go to zero, two, and zero. All right, zero can go. To one one and two okay one can go to three two can go to one and three can't go to anything all right seems right
let's print the cue here. It's more debugging because something is very wrong. It's not obvious at all. Oh. Uh, Yeah, the problem is it adds zero twice because it's a neighbor twice. And I don't want to convert to a set. So we're going to have to do it a little less fancy like. But correct. So new queue is empty. For each node, we'll, re we'll update reward. For neighbor and genome reach neighbor. So then here we'll check if reach of neighbor equals two, then new queue append neighbor. So we can't do it this fancy way anymore. And then we'll say queue equals new queue. Not that bad. over counting because I was twice exploring nodes. You don't want to do that. Time limit exceeded. Is there something so simple? Answer. What am I doing wrong here? One, one, one. Right, let's take a look at this problem because it seems pretty interesting. So every node is open. All right. Oh, let's get this here. So every node is open. All right. One has paths to zero and two. And I have a path to one. Everything's open. How is that? I'm, I'm misunderstanding something. Because the status is open. And I have a path to it. So it's open. I can reach it. I totally misunderstood this problem. Then. I don't know what, what I misunderstand. It's open. I can reach it. These are open, and I can reach them.
but someone in here is gonna know why the heck I'm wrong. I don't get it. Okay, obviously somebody else is somebody else is Dude, this doesn't make any sense at all. How is this submission wrong? I have path to zero and two. All the boxes are open. Let's look at this problem again. So is the Oh shit. Okay, so do I have keys for this box? Okay, so the problem is is that you can be given keys for an open box and that doesn't provide you with any additional information. So... Oh, Alright, so there's going to need to be some change here. So if it's a box... 
So if the box status is open, then this is a key. So every time so we have to label the type of um, we have to label the type of uh, access we're getting from this edge. Is this edge a key or is this edge uh, contained? So since this is a box contained, then this will be a box would be all right box. If it's initial boxes, that's a box would be so box B, and then we have to make a decision. So then reach could be an array of size 2. That always gets uglier when you have to figure out how these things work. Okay. Okay. At for neighbor and uh, box type. So if box type equals B, plus equals one, equals one. So if the sum of reach neighbor equals two, Too slow, huh? No. Maybe it's good. It's just really at the cusp of what's allowed. Yeah, this is a hard, a lot harder than I expected. I, on reading it, I thought it'd be pretty approachable, but this is a hard problem for sure. How many of my soul family? Is it really that bad? Well, we don't want, okay, so this could give you another problem where, you know, I'm thinking about it, that something becomes a neighbor again. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. So explore equals set. You don't want to re-explore anything. Or no, you could just say. Uh, we're just gonna. I'm running. My computer's starting to get hot, so I don't want to freeze on me. So, explored equals 
zero times the length of length of anything, length of anything, candies. Okay, times length of candies. We're going to say E at node equals 1. If E at neighbor equals 1, continue. Because we don't want to we don't want to overcount anything. If something else could have a path back Yeah, this gets so messy. Why is it so much higher? It's like insanely high. Damn it, man. Yes! This is probably my most pitiful upload, so I apologize. Um, let's see if I can do a little bit of refactoring here. So if it already re equals 2, so if the sum. 
That was freaking hard, man. This is one of those problems where it's like easy on the surface, but there's all these good kind of use cases you have to think about. So if the sum equals 2, then it's already been added. You don't need to add it again. If the sum exists, no, that's going to fail. D goes to, then you've already explored. Alright, cool. Alright, so that's the solution. For this problem, you gotta think about the fact that you don't want to explore the same node twice because maybe a, a box is already open and then you got a key for it. Or maybe a box. Yeah, a box is already open, you have a key for it, or maybe you have multiple keys for the same boxes. So you need to account for the fact that do I have a key and do I have the box? Right? So if I had enough time, I would just do this problem over again and iterate that issue, but no one watches my videos anyways.